students in today's video we are going to discuss different routes of administration of drugs now this video is a third part of the series on general pharmacology now as we all know a drug a drug is a substance that treats diseases and improve our health for example paracetamol a very common drug that is used for fever now routes of administration are the different paths or the different ways by which a drug is given to a patient now there are two main routes of administration of drugs namely the local routes and the systemic routes now local routes are the localized routes it is the administration of the drug at a particular location uh, from where the effect is required for example betadine Betadine is a very uh, common antiseptic. Uh, you must have heard of it. It is used on skin wounds. It is used on the minor cuts to prevent infection. So it is applied at the site where the action is required, like the minor cut. So this administration of betadine is the local route of administration. Now, on the contrary, is a systemic. Systemic refers to the entire body. Now, systemic routes are the routes from where the drug is absorbed in the blood and that blood containing the drug is circulated throughout the body. For example, a drug fexofenadine. Fexofenadine is an anti-allergic drug. It is used to prevent skin rashes. It is used to prevent itching. Now, it is given orally. The drug is given orally. So, the route of administration is the oral it is absorbed in the blood from the small intestine. Now that blood containing fexofenadine, it circulates throughout the body and it prevents itching, it prevents skin rashes throughout the body. So the oral route of administration of fexofenadine is the systemic route of administration where the effect is produced throughout the body. Uh, now let's uh, discuss different types of uh, local routes of drug administration. There are mainly three types of local routes of drug administrations. Drugs applied topically, then drugs injected in the deeper tissues and drugs injected in the arterial supply. Now first talking about the topical administration. Now topical administration is the application of drug to a body surface for the local action. Now these drugs uh, or the topical administration includes application of drug directly on the skin or on the mucous membrane. Now, directly on the skin, for example, betadine already we have discussed. Now, a very good example of the drug applied on the mucous membrane is the eye drops. Now, here the drug is absorbed from the mucous membrane of eye. For example, eye drops to prevent dryness of eyes, eye drops to prevent itching in the eyes. So, these are the examples of the drugs uh, that are absorbed from the mucous membrane that is a topical application second is the injection of drugs in the deeper tissues for local action now intraarticular route in the intraarticular route drug is injected in the articular cartilage now articular cartilage covers the joints for example hydrocortisone acetate it is an anti-inflammatory drug it is injected in the knee joint for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. That is the local action of the drug. Then intrathecal root. A drug is injected in the spinal cord. For example, administration of spinal anesthesia by the administration of bupivacaine. Now, bupivacaine is a drug that can be given by the uh, intrathecal root. And it is used for doing the short procedures as it uh, produces anesthesia. Another route is the retrobulbar route. Now here the drug is injected behind the eyeball. For example, again hydrocortisone acetate, anti-inflammatory agent. It is administered by the retrobulbar route and it prevents swelling uh, at the back of eye and it uh, improves the vision. Then third is the local application of drug in the artery. Uh, for example, uh, intra-arterial chemotherapy. Now, in the intra-arterial chemotherapy, drug is injected in the artery very close to the tumor or the cancer cell so that the maximum concentration of drug reaches the cancer cell. For example, malphalan, carboplatin. So, these are the local routes 
for the administration of uh, drugs. Now, uh, the second broad division of uh, routes of administration is a systemic route. Now, unlike the local routes uh, where the drug is predominantly uh, producing its effect locally, in the systemic route, drug is absorbed in the blood and it produces its effect throughout the body. Now, uh, the first and the most important of all the systemic routes is the oral route. Oral route is also called as anteral route. Now, anteral refers to the gastrointestinal tract. So, the drug, uh, so in this route, uh, the drug is taken uh, by the mouth, it is swallowed, it reaches the gastrointestinal tract and it is absorbed in the blood either from the gut or from the small intestine. That is, finally, the drug reaches the blood. For example, Lozartan. Lozartan is an antihypertensive drug. It is administered orally and it reduces the blood pressure. Now, the major disadvantage of oral route is the first pass metabolism of drug. That is, drug is metabolized in the liver or in the gut before it reaches the blood circulation. So, the dose of the drug is to be designed accordingly. Now, second route is a sublingual, sublingual route or the buccal route. Now here the tablet is placed under the tongue and the drug is absorbed from the mucous membrane of the mouth and it reaches the blood circulation. So here in this case liver is bypassed uh, but the drug should be lipid soluble that means the drug should be lipophilic. A very good example is of nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin sublingual tablets are available which are used for angina. Now, the third systemic route, route is the rectal route. Now, the drug is usually in the form of suppository and the suppository is inserted in the rectum and absorbed uh, from the mucous membrane of the rectum in the blood. Now, this route is very inconvenient. Absorption is incomplete and uh, absorption is highly erratic. It's not predictable. Now, for example, uh, suppositories for the treatment of hemorrhoids. Then enemas. Enemas are injected in the rectum for the management of constipation. These enemas are commonly used. Then the fourth systemic route is the inhalation. A drug is inhaled as a gas or uh, it is inhaled as an aerosol. For example, asthma inhaler, albuterol, very common. Uh, it produces very rapid bronchodilation. Then the next systemic route is a transdermal route. Now transdermal patches with medication are placed on the skin and the medication is absorbed through the skin in the blood. Now absorption is slow but it is highly consistent. Now transdermal route is useful only for the lipophilic drug uh, that is a lipid soluble drug. For example nicotine patches. Uh, these patches help people to quit smoking. Now, a next route is the parenteral route. That is, this route is not anteral. Now, anteral, as we have already discussed, anteral refers to the gastrointestinal tract. So, the route is not anteral. That means the drug does not pass through the gastrointestinal tract. Very important to remember that in the parenteral route, the drug does not pass through the gastrointestinal tract and the drug is injected directly in the blood or in the tissue fluids. Now it is of several types. Now first type of parenteral root is a subcutaneous. Now here sub refers to below and cutaneous means skin. So the drug is injected in the fat below the skin. For example insulin. Insulin, heparin are administered by the subcutaneous root. Now second parenteral root is the intramuscular that is drug is injected in the skeletal muscle for example deltoid muscle in the shoulder then gluteus muscle in the abdomen uh, for example covaxin covaxin is a corona vaccine so covaxin is uh, given or it is administered by the intramuscular route now another very important parenteral route is the intravenous route now the drug is injected through the skin into the veins the effect is produced immediately and uh, this route is highly beneficial in emergencies. Now, antibiotics like uh, gentamicin, vencomycin, they are given by the intravenous route. Now, next parenteral route is the intradermal route. Now, here derma refers to the skin. 
and dermis is the outermost layer of skin. So the drug is injected in the dermis. For example, BCG vac vaccine. BCG vaccine is given by the intradermal route. So this is in brief on the routes of administration, uh, local routes of administration and uh, systemic routes of drug administration. Now information provided in this video is exclusively for students from their examination point of view. Kindly do not use this information for the clinical use. Now if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.